his mother of a YouTube channel called Eight Passengers. Kind of did vlogs and everything, family vlogs, explaining and expressing how she parented her children and things they went through. And it kind of was a lot of things just all out there. And I don't really agree with kind of just putting all your business out there and letting your kids lives and everything be exposed to complete strangers just to prove a point. I don't really agree with that. That's not my method. Uh, But the method that she was doing, it was working until it wasn't. Let's check out this clip. And you can get a little bit of synopsis about what was going on. Some of the things she did, you're going to see that in this clip here. Some of the counselors and the therapists that got involved because of what these children were going through, because of the exasperation. Like I said, there is a wrong way to parent. There is a wrong way to do the ministry of parenting. And exasperation is one of those things. And you're getting to see that, getting ready to see that firsthand. So let's get into this. Social media influencer who preached tough love parenting with harsh punishment was handed some harsh punishment of her own today. Former momfluencer Ruby Frankie was sentenced to four to 60 years in a Utah prison. Her business partner Jody Hildebrand will serve the same sentence. She committed horrible acts of child abuse. Ms. Frank held her children ages 9 and 11 in a concentration camp like setting. The children were regularly denied food, water, beds to sleep in, and virtually all forms of entertainment. 42-year-old Frankie, a mother of six, broke down as she spoke about her children in court. I wouldn't do anything in this world for you. I took from her all that was soft and safe and good. How terrifying this must have been for you. She rose to fame with her YouTube channel, Eight Passengers, with two million followers. She and Hildebrand were noted for their tough discipline. Abby, we took the phone away from Abby um, November. in November. Oh, and and, and you, may, you may never get the phone back. But while she posed as a loving but strict mom, she was actually subjecting her kids to horrific abuse, even tying them up for long periods. She was exposed when her 12-year-old son ran to a neighbor for help. He's emaciated, he's got tape around his legs, he's hungry and he's thirsty. He's obviously covered in wounds. Frankie pled guilty last year and flipped on Hildebrand, who then pled guilty too. In our institutional memory, this is, this is one of the worst child abuse cases we've seen. How do Kevin and his children heal? I think there are two parts to it. I think the children at some point need to feel like they can trust adults again after what Ruby and Jody did to them. And I think the second part of that is uh, for Kevin uh, to continue to uh, get professional intervention. He's he's actually engaged uh, uh, frequently with a therapist who's helping him walk through this to help heal the children. But I think, I think and, and this has already kind of partially happened, yeah, his contact with them and his evidencing his support and comfort for them and uh, renewing old uh, memories when their their family was great uh, and having them inside familiar surroundings where they can be with their their things and their rooms. And um, I think that's the way, at least in my opinion, I think that's what uh, the therapists involved now are hoping to achieve is to give them some level of comfort comfort in their environment and secondly interesting so apparently the dad didn't really even he wasn't involved in this it was the lady and frankie they were saying and her co-worker that was pretty much a friend this is that exasperation taking things away from them and and and, and it's just it's treating them like you said giving going days without food water making like bare necessities the bare likeness everyone they need water you need food just bare minimum necessities making that something that they have to earn and or deserve that's abuse that's abuse but you know people would always say oh hurt people hurt people i'm starting to believe that even abused people abuse people there is a level of forgiveness that you have to have for yourself, for the people that have wronged you, for your parents, if you will, in order for you to be able to effectively carry out parenting for that matter, and whatever other missions and duties that you're called to carry out. 
it's interesting because in my opinion, I would think that with the father not really being involved with what was going on, kudos to him. But on the other end, I would think that you should still know as a man of a home and even as a man of God, this family is is known to be, I believe, a Mormon family. I believe this is based out of Utah. And uh, as a man of God and the head of the home, as God calls us to be, I think that you should position yourself to know what's going on. So there is a part of instruction, yes, but there also is a part of protecting that comes with the ministry of parenting. This is very sad, man. And to use it, and a lot of people are doing this. A lot of people find themselves in these positions where they're, uh, these parents, they're using their children, you know, for growth, for fame, uh, for exposure, whatever the case may be. And it's not, it's not looking right, man. It's not a good look. I feel for these kids. I definitely feel for these kids. And in correlation to the mother who went to the vacation in Puerto Rico and left her one year old in a playpen for 10 days. And that child lost their life because of that. Let's say if that child didn't lose their life and they grew up sometimes that trauma that was inflicted onto that person, it carries on. Then they become an adult who does things to their children and it continues to go. But when does the cycle break? This has to stop. I feel that on the religious aspect, people saying they're a Mormon. I know a lot of parents on the religious aspect, they do parent out of fear. So they come down more harsh. It's more of an authoritarian style parenting because you're afraid. You're trying to overprotect. You're trying to protect too much. But at some point, in that ministry of parenting, just like in the ministry of anything, we've got to trust God that as long as we're doing what we've been instructed to do, he's going to take care of the things that we can't see. And furthermore, the things that might be a little too much for us to handle. Things we're unaware of, things that we can't prevent from happening, but God's ultimate power is going to be able to protect our children. Instead of trying to take phones away from them so they don't have access to the world because the media is dark and this is dark and that. Da, da, da. Trust that God is going to protect them. Teach them about the love of God. Teach them about the grace of God, the mercy of God, the protection of God. And believe it ourselves. Because like I'm saying, sometimes we can parent out of fear. Sometimes we can live out of fear. We can make choices and decisions out of fear. And it puts us in positions where we think we're doing the right thing, but we're not. God tells us to fear not. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. He gave us sound mind. He gave us love, peace. So we got to use that sound mind. We got to use wisdom. And we got to know that exasperating our kids and abandoning them, neglecting them, it's not right. It's not right. And I'm not pointing fingers saying that people are bad people. This is a bad mom. These women are bad, 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 bad. No, it's unfortunate. It's sad. And they need help. And we need prayer. Our mothers need prayer. They need prayer. This is a tough time. And motherhood is tough. Fatherhood is tough. The ministry of parenting is challenging. We need prayer. And we need to be praying for our mothers and praying for our children and praying for other families, man. I see and hear stuff like this. And it always hurts me because in the time that I spend praying... I realize that I'm not nearly using the belief I have, the power in my tongue and the power of prayer in a way that can really help other people. Sometimes we go to prayer and it's a little too selfish. That's for our own needs. But to really kind of just shut the lens on my own life and open the lens for others. And I have sympathy for it. And know that this is an attack of the enemy division that 
those negative thoughts for a mother to even leave her child for 10 days to go on a vacation for these mothers to exasperate their children and, and, and send them through things and neglect them of basic necessities just to send a message and prove a point and just to grow a channel and to grow a, a business or what have you, whatever the case may be. We got to know that there's a problem in that and that problem needs to be addressed with prayer. That problem needs a savior. There needs to be a renewing of the mind because I think a lot of people are afraid. Even that mother who left her child for days, 10 days to go on a vacation in Puerto Rico, maybe she was too afraid to ask for help. The judge said you could have called someone and asked for help. Maybe she was too afraid to ask for help. But you can't live a life in fear. Because God encourages us not to fear. Fear not. Do not be dismayed. If you believe in me, believe also in my father. For in my father's house there's many mansions. He says, I've gone to prepare a place for you. I've got many mansions in his father's house. There's no reason to fear, parent out of fear, live out of fear, make decisions and choices out of fear. If you need help, ask for help. But above all, above all, we got to pray. We got to pray for the ministry of parenting and we got to pray for our mothers and also pray for our fathers. Because these are the these are the ones that are in the position right now, mothers and fathers, we are in the position right now to either cause trauma for the next generation or we can instill things in them and parent them the right way under the ministry of parenting. And we can reap good benefits for themselves, for ourselves. And it'd be more pleasing to God, man. We don't need too many people growing up in all these generations like we got going on now. People just sad and depressed and anxiety and depression at an all-time high. Suicide rates, divorce rates, all the negative things, percentages, just way too high. Way too high. We got to do something about it. We got to do something about it. And we have power in our tongue. And we have power in a God that we believe sacrificed his son's life for the sins of the entire world that if we believe on that one thing we're saved that's powerful i appreciate you guys man that's all i got for you guys on this one god bless you guys i appreciate you guys stand as always like i said to the next one guys that's all i got i'm out